Hello, welcome to Footprints. My name is Samuel Atamensa. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll be introducing our guest for today. Welcome back to the program, and this is Footprint. I have with me Professor Ivan Adai Mensa. Now, this is a name that resonates with um, certain people who were in their active lives within a certain period. If you like, between the half, halfway through the 70s through the 90s. And he has um, walked the path in academia with serious footprints. And he has also walked the path in politics with an enviable footprint. And I say enviable because he's one of those that has walked the path of politics in Ghana with no controversy. So the man is Professor Ivan Ademensa. Welcome to the program, Prof. Thank you very much. Yeah. How have you been, Prof? Well, surviving. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Considering nice. the situation as it is now, I, I can't complain. Oh, we yeah. thank God. We thank God. It's good to see you. Yeah. Prof, you know, um, my first encounter with Ivan a diamond, sir. Was when I was a student in secondary school when I used your chemistry book. Oh, that book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. In fact, I I took to chemistry because of that book. Oh, I'm happy to hear that. It's simplicity and thoroughness. Mm -hmm. And it um, also, you know, prior to that, and correct me if I'm wrong, a lot of the Chemistry books were written by British people. Yes, that's true. So it was more one of the very rare books written by an indigenous, uh, and the references were more familiar, a good one. And how, how did you how did you end up with that book, and why did you um, target secondary schools instead of say lower primary or um, any other level of education? Well, um, when I started working in the chemistry department, uh, I also became a, uh, an examiner for WAEC. Oh, okay. Uh, in fact, I rose all the way to be chief examiner and then moderator. Um, the only thing that I didn't become was subject officer because that was reserved for employees of uh, WAEC. Mm -hmm. But I became a moderator. And uh, we saw the need for, as he said, something that will resonate with Ghanaians or with West Africans, targeted at the West African uh, school people. So we set up a team, uh, myself, Professor Sumening, uh, Dr. Yabua, who lives just about two blocks away from me here. Oh, wow. Yeah and uh, Dr. Bempa, with uh, some other secondary school teachers. Mr. Kofi, who later became headmaster of, uh, assistant headmaster of GSTS, okay. and then later headmaster of Bompe secondary, secondary school. school yeah. And then Mr. Mensa, who was teaching at secondary college, and uh, one or two other people. So we wrote these A-level books. But I personally wrote some books also for O-level, I remember the O level yes. one. Yeah. I also wrote some books for O level. And uh, I've been doing this over the years. When I moved to Kenya, I think we'll be talking about that later. Yes, yes, yes. I also wrote similar books for the Kenyan examination system. Mm -hmm. so Do you still have your books in circulation? Uh, well, they're out of print, but I have copies. Okay, so um, these are some of the books. I have the one for the advanced level chemistry, um, which is by Professor Ivan Adaimensa, um, Dr. William Asumening, Dr. Ousu Bempa, and Dr. Yabua. Uh, volumes one and two combined. I mean, um, 
it, it will be sad if we still don't have some of these books around. Or maybe people have upgraded the content. You remember some of the things you, you discussed in, in this book? Yeah. You remember yes, some? Yes, I do. I do. I do. And there is a story behind this book, actually, okay. yeah. which I would want to tell. I've told it somewhere before. Mm -hmm. um, I was in the U.S. recently for a conference, conference of uh, black chemical engineers and chemists. Mm -hmm. So there were a lot of Ghanaians and Nigerians around. Uh, we had a Nigerian edition also. Oh, yeah. So it circulated in Nigeria also, uh, including some really top, top, top level scientists, chemists uh, who are currently in America. One of them, for example, Professor Suga at Cornell University, he's been touted as a potential um, Nobel Prize winner, I must oh. say that. Ghanaian. Ghanaian. Suga. I taught him in Legon wow. before he went to the U.S. and never came back. <laughs> uh, but he was even there to receive a prize mm. uh, from the American people. And during the conference, everybody, every Ghanaian I met was, oh, we used your book. Every one of us. Uh, almost everybody was. So, so when it came for me to deliver my keynote address, the president of the association who was introducing me said, well, there is a book that every Ghanaian and Nigerian I meet around here has been talking about that they used your book, this, that, this, that. What is this book at all? That, oh, you know, it became a sort yeah, of yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. way of introducing. So I, right. I was very happy that at least what we set out to do to try and impact people mm. uh, had mm. bought mm. some, uh, won some fruit. Congratulations. Yeah. Mm. I mean, you... you, you I, I shouldn't take the credit alone. I, my co-authors also should take the credit. Uh, well... We, you know. It's good for you to do that. Yeah. We, we as students could only remember Adam and Sam, That's what <laughs> well, well, but it was teamwork. The thing is, yeah. uh, but far, far away, back in the day, mm -hmm. I saw, you know, I, my only understanding of the Mola concept and, yeah, the, exactly. and uh, the Gay Luzak's mm -hmm. law yeah, of combining yeah. volumes, Avogadro's law and yeah. all these things. Is your book that really taught us anything? In fact, ev everybody says one thing they remember. How we explained hybridization. Mm -hmm. Where uh, orbitals mix mm -hmm. and they become new orbitals. They have some of the characteristics of the, the, of the uh, S orbital and some of the characteristics of the P orbital. Yeah. And, uh, but they are not the same. Yeah. And we used the soup where you mix groundnut soup Nkati with uh, <laughs> and it has some characteristics we can relate. Of, yes and everybody was able to understand that yeah. concept mm. that it has characteristics of both yeah. but it is not the same the thing same. Yeah. yeah so you can have in cutting coin and a ben coin mixed together a ben coin. Uh -huh. And you call it in Katibe. In Katibe. But yes. in Katibe, it's not the same as Abenkwai. Aben it's not the, the same, same as in Katibe. No, you are a good prof. <laughs> 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 so that was A level chemistry yeah. that covered um, mainly the YX syllabus yeah. for the advanced level yes. um, chemistry. Yeah. Um, then you had organic chemistry, which is um, some material you put together with your team again yeah uh, uh, and this was meant for university students yes for university okay. students yeah uh, typically chemistry students yeah. but um, it's also good for final for year and SHA and students oh yeah. i see yeah um pharmacy students use pharmacy this, students yes, and chemical anybody in the chemical science exactly could exactly. use this because that's where and I even remember. medical students oh yeah of course medical of course. students because you need a good understanding of Organic, chemistry yeah. to be able to do your medicine <laughs> or you know i'm a medicinal chemist yes yeah so yes. Uh, without the because chemistry you did some you papers in pharmaceutical chemistry yes, and all a that a lot of it yeah. yeah yeah so this is it um it may not be in the bookshelves, but um, if you want it, we, we can get some for you, okay? Yeah. Prof, where did you do your early childhood education? Well, let me start from the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, I was born at Akimoda, 
hospital. Government, that, we'll yeah, government hospital. Government hospital, yes. yes. My father was then the headmaster of the Akim Suedru Methodist School. Okay. And my mother was a domestic science teacher in the mm. same school, what you now call home science. Home science, uh, She yes. was teaching domestic science. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how I came to be born at Akimota Hospital. Yeah. So you are not an uh, action? No, 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 I'm in Zima. Oh, in Zima, yeah. not even a Fanti? No, not even a Fanti, no. Okay, because yeah. I know you spoke Fanti at some I point. I speak so. Fanti, I speak Tree, ah. I speak... Yeah. I speak, I speak a number of languages. Oh, great. Yeah. So that makes you a typical uh, Ghanaian. Uh, yeah, well... <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, being a headmaster's son, my father was being transferred around the country almost every two years. Mm. So when I was just two years old, we were transferred to Shama. And at the age of three, I started kindergarten at Shama Methodist School. Just a year after that, when I was four years old, we had spent about three or four years in uh, Shama, but I spent, uh, I was two years when we went there. So we, after two years in Shama, we moved to Abrodunkwa. Where again, my father was the headmaster of Abrodon Co. Methodist School. And that's where I started class one. Everything was going on fine. And two years later, in 1948, we were transferred to Ejumaku Bisiasi. That's where I had my class two and class three. That's closer to my hometown. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, you, you are from Oh, yes. okay. Yes, 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 we used yes. to pass through there on, whenever yeah, we were going true. to Sekendi or to Agzum. Mm. So it was there that uh, tragedy struck. Uh, my mom. Yeah, in this must be We lost my mother. Wow. wow. I think through complications in childbirth. Wow. 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 And I don't know whether my father couldn't stand it, but just about two weeks after his burial, uh, burial uh, my father also fell ill. Mm. So uh, we moved to Agzim, apparently for him to go and have some medical attention. And um, we were in Axim, we were three boys. I was the last boy. And we, we were not put in school. So we were just loafing around in Axim. My father was in hospital. No one could tell what was wrong with him. And he was just deteriorating. And so my maternal grandmother, who was then at Takwa, got a bit worried and came down to Axim to come and take us away to Takwa for us to continue school. Yeah, this was yeah. five months we hadn't been in school. Wow. And my paternal grandmother said, well, my maternal grandmother could take us away, but she would have to leave my eldest brother behind to take care of my father. Yeah. So two out of the three, we left for Takwa. Of course, when we got there, this was in November. My mother died in May. In November, so school was ending, school year was ending in December. At that time, it was January to December. Mm -hmm. And so there was no place in the, in the class. In the class, yeah. So you had to stay home again? Yeah, yeah, no. The headmaster of the infant school, who had worked under my father at Shama, mm -hmm. uh, had a bright idea. He said, okay. I could go into class three, I was then in class three, loaf around in the classroom, and at the end of the year, take the examination with the other pupils. Mm -hmm. And if I go through, uh, then I'll have my them. name properly inserted in the register mm -hmm. and admitted into uh, Taco Methodist School. So I was given a little stool, which I used as my writing desk. And my chair was the floor. Mm -hmm. I sat on the floor and wrote on the writing school. But were all the others the same? Or oh, they no, had no, the others were all, you know, because they were fully oh, registered. Okay. So they had their desks 
everything. But ours are not worn out. <laughs> it's only if somebody absented himself or herself from uh, school, you, you then I will perch <laughs> on the person's... Uh, my other brother couldn't get a place in the Metazoo school. So he had to go to Takwa Anglican School for about two, three years before he could move into the Methodist school. And uh, at the end of the year, that is one month later, we had a school exam and I came forth. Wow. Five months out of school. The odd one. <laughs> yeah. So naturally my name was put in the register and we were all marched to the junior school, standard one. Wow. And so that's, that's uh, how I, my elementary school mm. went. Uh, well, at which secondary school? When I, at Takwa, I took the common entrance examination and mm, got into Achimota School. Um, Achimota School from at that time, what had happened to your father? My father died two years after we got to Takwa in 1951. Wow. So it was my grandmother. So, so when my father died, my eldest brother was also uh, brought He's from Agzum. Yeah. No, he came to uh, second D to join our maternal grandfather. Okay. And he managed to find himself into Mfanspim. Okay. But I got into Achimota. The other one got into Fijai Secondary School. The one after whom I come mm -hmm. got into Fijai Secondary School. And I came to Achimota. Um, Achimota was a major experience. It was, uh, it's a school that I, I will always be proud of. W had you always wanted to go to Achimota School? No. How did you no, get I, to know? Somehow I, I had wanted to go to Mfanspin, but my, my brother who was already at Mfanspin said no go somewhere else. <laughs> uh, there were reasons for that, yeah, but yeah. Uh, I, I came to Achimota. So you did the whole The whole year from Form 1 to Upper, upper six. 6. Wow. You know, Which year did you enter? 56. 56? February 56. Wow. 17th February 1956, you to be precise. And, and, and what is uh, the other bright students? Oh, group? yes. My classmates, Ah, my group, we call ourselves the 1960-year group. Thank you. And uh, everybody was somebody. Wow. Professor Dateban, Justice Dateban Justice was Dateban. my mate. Yeah. Professor Albert Fiajo, the one who did the constitution, he yeah. was my mate. Um, Professor A. N. Mensa, Professor Nijan Dodu, uh, Professor Tute, uh, Mrs. Mensa. You remember uh, Thomas Mensa, the. Uh, Court, the, one. The, the one who was at the uh, court of uh, arbitration for the law of the sea, the one who okay. sat on the petroleum project. Uh, pro uh, I'm not familiar with that. Uh, but okay, but sure. the, the Ghana Ivory Coast uh, thing. Yeah, the issue. Yeah, yeah, the wife was also my mate. Okay. Thomas Mensah himself, he was several years uh, our yeah, senior. Oh, okay. But I met people like Akila Kwasoya, who was in Form 5 then. Oh, I see. And he was our boxing coach. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> he used to say that, no, I was a very tiny boy. And he said, look, mm -hmm. come and join my boxing uh, team, and I'll put some muscle <laughs> on you. you know, but they were the Accra boys. They were the Accra boys, yes. <laughs> they knew their way around yes. town. <laughs> and uh, Any of your year group mates um, came into politics? Um, not really. Not really. I can't think of any of them because mm. I can't say that a bar was in. Oh, it was yeah, a course, Supreme course, Court course, judge, no, you know. That's not it. Uh, it was by his own merit. Mm -hmm. uh, Mills was a year behind me. Behind, okay, yeah. okay. So, so and then Osaf Mafutu was a year behind me. Okay. But my own mates, apart from Rear Admiral uh, Amedume. Amedume. Right. who became a PN uh, and uh, SMC. SMC2 uh, member. One can say that that was, was some form of... Too. He was a commissioner. Yeah. Mm. Uh, one can say that yeah. maybe he, he could uh, be described as having you remember been in school. Oh, very, very much. What kind of person was Ahmed Dume? Very quiet person. Everybody says that. Lovely very person. Very quiet. Tall, big, but extremely affable. Everybody liked him. And he was shot. Yes. Well. How did you feel about it? 
oh. as somebody you have stayed in the same class with? You know, our year group eventually, we organized a memorial service for him. Mm. When his bones were eventually Recover, yes. recovered from some. But uh, it's an issue I sometimes don't want to yeah, of course. go into. But he was my mate. Mm. Yeah, he right. was also my mate. Okay, this is Footprints, and um, I am here with Professor Ivan Adaimensa. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the program. It's Footprints, and I have with me Professor Ivan Adaimensa. Prof, you were in Achimota School, early years, you know, within a short time you made all the friends. Now, what, what are some of your memorable um, experiences in Achimota School? Were you a sports person? Yes, I was. Mm. In fact, when, when I was in Apasis, I was games monitor for my house, Jamfi House. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I played cricket, I played hockey, I was... Um, the scorer in, uh, for the school cricket team, okay. together with uh, the late Colonel Alex, jo Colonel Alex Johnson, okay. who used to be the director for legal services okay. in the Ghana Armed I Forces. Mean, yeah. He was my mate also. Wow. And we were the school scorers. So, so, oh, cricket? Uh, for cricket, yeah. You didn't play soccer? Uh, only for the house, uh, but no, not, no, not, no, not for the school. The school. Uh, I played hockey, even in the university. University, mm -hmm. I was in the university hockey team. Uh, Arch Mother School, there were better hockey players. <laughs> I mean, uh, I was a goalkeeper, but if Aunyu uh, Akaba, and, uh, who was a national goalkeeper, and uh, uh, De Graft were there, I, there was no way I could you, you, get you into get a calling. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> but, you know, I played with people like Edward Fache, who was the in this. Yeah, the one, who, he was in the same house with me. He was a year ahead of me. Oh, okay. Yeah, and later on we became sports commentators together, together uh, oh, at yes, uh, GBC. Yes, yes, yes. You know, and um, it was an experience. It's, it wasn't book all the time. Yeah. We really had enough time to participate in all sorts of things. Mm. It was a holistic type of education that we had there. Form one, we did woodwork, pottery, modeling, art. Uh, uh, name it. In fact, the bookshelf I constructed when I was in Form 1 in the carpentry uh, class, mm -hmm. I used it until I was in the university. Wow. It was an adjustable uh, bookshelf. So the more books you had, the more it's you could, fun, yeah. you know, to, to inform one, to construct such a thing. Yeah. Now we talk about SHS, people should learn whatever it is, JHS. You know, I don't see that sort of thing. You, Bro, know. you miss Achimota School. I really do. I said that the experience I had there, I'll never forget. And also, you know, when I was from Form 2 going to Form 3, in addition to my government scholarship, which I had got in Form 1, I was also given a Cadbury and Fry scholarship, mm -hmm. which was backdated. So I had some money. Spare money. Spare on, money, yeah. which I used to take private music lessons from Mr. P. Sigbo, the composer of our Ghana National Anthem. Mm -hmm. And so I learned how to play the piano and the organ. Uh, later on in life, I also learned how to play the flute. So. Was there any shift in, in culture when you had moved from um, Takwa mm. into Accra in a new environment? Oh, well, th th there were some cultural changes, but we had been brought in from all over the world. Mm. Uh, all over the country. The country yeah. Maybe I could say all over the world because we had some foreigners also yeah, the, among the, ourselves. At the time, yeah, yeah. we had all the yeah. diplomats. The, the yeah, they used to the send their children. And, and the also airlines. lecturers from the University of Ghana. Ghana yeah. Some of them had their ch uh, children. Uh, Professor Chaplin, for example, had... Uh, his children had the chaplain and co. They were all there. Do so you remember the school anthem? Yes, we you we, can we still sing oh it. yes, from Gambaga to Accra. Accra. I can sing it. <laughs> I, I know it by heart. And uh, then the school hymn, Grey City of the Outlaws. 
please try and sing it because that's what oh, my voice at, uh, my voice is uh you know that some of the it's a bit, it's they a say bit that, croaky don't 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 concentrate on my yeah. voice concentrate on yeah. the words yeah. well <laughs> let's let, because we have a lot to talk about yeah. later on i'll, I'll mm -hmm. we'll probably okay. talk about so, so from achimota to university of ghana yes mm -hmm. uh, but before we move i told you i was one of professor yes boxing yes. people mm -hmm. and then we had a lot of cultural uh, studies also uh, in sixth form for example those of us who were in the sciences we also did something we called the history and philosophy of art and also music appreciation and those in the arts did the history and philosophy of science <laughs> So you left the school knowing something about everything. Yeah. Well, so sometimes when people say, oh, you seem to know something about everything, including even philosophy, I say it's because of Achimota, not Lego. But coming to Achimota, that time the road from Takwa to uh, Sekendi was not tired. And I was barefooted. You came to school barefooted? Of course. I was barefooted. Why? You couldn't find your footwear? I hadn't worn a shoe since my mother died. The next time I wore a pair of shoes after my mother's death, before my mother died, every year we were taken to Sekendi and a shoemaker measured our feet and sold a pair of shoes for us, made to measure. Oh, okay. That, that would be expensive. Oh, it was, that was how... Shoes were but not in being sold. In, in modern, day, in that in modern be days. That, that, but that was how shoes were made. made yeah. But after the death of my mom and the sickness of my father, uh -huh. my grandmother couldn't afford shoes for us. So we were going to school barefooted. And I came to Archimoto School barefooted. Mm -hmm. And the first time I was given a, a pair of sandals was when I got my Archimoto sandals from the matron's office. Uh, in the di near the dining hall. Were you alone in this? I wasn't alone. That's the beauty of it. You know, I slept between two people, one from KG in the Volta region. Never. That was the beauty of the boarding school system yeah. at the time. time yeah. And there were several others who have remained friends up to now. Correct. You know, one of them, uh, Mr. Mr. Ose, who was my roommate when I was in Apasis. His car is parked in my, my yard here. He lives just close to me here. He's a computer scientist. He went to Harvard after this form. Uh, also to do chemistry and then branched into computer science. We've remained friends and very close friends ever since. So that's what the school did for us. Mm. As we speak now, I'm the chairman of the endowment fund for Archmoder School. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 it's a school that I, I will remain very proud of forever. Okay, yeah. so from Achimota School, we go to University of Ghana. Yes, well. uh, I go to University of Ghana um, after the first year, what they call the FUE at the time. FUE, yes. Yeah, I was selected as one of the students to do the special honors in chemistry. That year, we were, the, we were only two. When you were leaving secondary school, what course were you eyeing in the University of Ghana? Oh, I went into the sciences okay. and I, I said, well, whichever one turns out to be um, okay. Mm -hmm. But I loved chemistry. I had loved chemistry since Form 2. Mm -hmm. I was taught chemistry by uh, Professor Hyde, mm -hmm. uh, a mathematician. He taught me maths and chemistry. And then one Scottish lady, uh, Miss Fraser, who unfortunately died on a trip to the north of Ghana. She oh. had a car accident. And then Miss Richards from Australia. And uh, Mr. Ofori had taught us biology. Mr. Somoafi had taught We had very good teachers. And you remember all of them? Oh, yes, I do. Wow. No, no problem. No problem. <laughs> because with some of them, we kept in touch even up to the time that they died. Wow. Evans Ofori was, he became director of the um, Animal Science Research Institute of CSIR, CSIR eventually, yeah. you know. So we're in touch all the time, you yeah, know. So um, I went to Legon after the FUE, uh, Professor Marianadi 
At that time, she was Marianne Co. Mm -hmm. She and I, we got selected in, to do the uh, special honors in both botany. That's Iramadi. Iramadi. Mm -hmm. Both botany and chemistry. I selected to do chemistry. chemistry. She decided to do botany mm -hmm. with chemistry as her ancillary. So we were in the same class. We would have been the only two. But that year, four other people were added to us straight from A level. And they included Professor Sumening, whom I have already mentioned. Mm -hmm. So we became only six in the special honors chemistry class. And that, that was a four year course. If you did special honors, you took four years. If you did the general, you did three, three years. years. And we went through, we managed to sort of make it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I was given an Elder Dempster Lines scholarship for my master's. Okay. Because I had then done the special honors, my master's was just one year, direct research, no coursework. You did a master's in University of Ghana? In the University of Ghana. Okay. On the Elder Dempster Lyons Scholarship. Mm -hmm. And whilst I was still doing the master's, I got a University of Ghana scholarship together with Professor Smeni for and I went to Cambridge University for my okay. PhD. So you did you did uh, the your PhD in Cambridge. Uh, in, in Cambridge in University. Cambridge, yeah. And Churchill College. Okay. Yeah. Which year was this? Uh, I left Ghana. 21st September 1967. <laughs> well, it was the birthday of Kwame Nkrumah and my mother's birthday also. Wow. So I remember that very, very well. I went to Cambridge. I spent three years there. And that was another experience altogether. Cambridge? Yes. A young Ghanaian bright student arrives in Cambridge. Yeah. Did you come back straight? Um, uh, yeah, to I'm, I'm coming to that. Mm -hmm. uh, I finished my PhD ahead of schedule and that is not to say I spent all my time doing <laughs> academic work. I also did a lot of extracurricular things. Wow. Uh, in my second year I was elected the president of the African Students uh, Union yeah, yeah. and I did so much, so much for the union. We got a lot of money. I was able to bring several um, artists to perform and let Africa be known. We got to Sibisa to come there. We got Guy Warren, Kofi Ganaba. Ganaba. Yes. We got uh, Fela Kuti wow. to, to come and perform there. We got the Ghana Dance Ensemble on their way from the Mexico Olympic Games. Mm -hmm. We brought them there to come and perform. No, that you are the big guy. Yes, I, w I was the one who coordinated all this. Mm -hmm. And I did so much that at the end of my term of office, the Africans said that another Ghanaian should be made the president. And lawyer uh, Osetutu Prempe, mm -hmm. who was then also doing law, was uh, nominated to succeed me as president. But anyway, I finished my PhD. Mm -hmm. That was when I also met my wife in the UK. In the UK. She had finished Leicester University and Swansea for her wow. postgraduate. That's a familiar one. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, That's where I went to school. So oh, okay. <laughs> then you have to meet each other. <laughs> uh, when we finish, you have to see her. And I came back home on 20th September 1970. I like so your... I spent exactly three years, no more, no less, Instead in Cambridge. Of how many years? Uh, the minimum was, you know, there was a law mm -hmm. in Cambridge that you have to spend nine terms, which effectively was three years. Yes, okay. So even you finished your, uh, your degree or did your oral exams before that, you still had to hang around in college until you had fulfilled the residential uh, oh, conditions. Okay. So I had to hang around. All right. And so I fulfilled the three years. But I had told myself that I wouldn't spend a day longer. <laughs> so I booked my, my flight to coincide with exactly three years in Britain. Wow. And my wife was, was also anxious to come home, but she followed me later. Oh, good. Yeah. So you came and then got employed? S straight into the University in, of into, Ghana. Into the University of Ghana, yes. To start teaching. Yes. Tell me about your experiences as a lecturer 
a, first of all, a young lecturer? Yeah. Um, well, I met some very good mentors. Professor Toto, the first Ghanaian member of staff of the University College of the Gold Coast. He was head of department and he had taught me here before I went to Cambridge. He was there. Professor Kwarte was also there and then Professor Ajebe Queen, who became the chairman vice and then, and then chairman, chairman of, of Council of, of State. Yeah. He was also there. And then we had teachers like uh, Professor Dakubu, Correct the Sundarams. Professor J. Queen mm. would be the first indigenous vice chancellor of the University of Ghana. No, Alec okay. Kwapon. Oh, Professor Kwapon. I, Kwa I, I, I Kwapon, kind of mixed it. Then Ajay Bekwin. Ajay Bekwin was a scientist too. Yes, right? he was yeah. a chemist. Yes, yes. yes the yes, number yes. of chemists who have become vice chancellors in this country <laughs> and elsewhere, you can't imagine. Wow, uh, coincidence. <laughs> oh, well, uh, you know, it could be coincidence. It could also be that chemists Chemistry. have a certain characteristic. <laughs> you know, they, they are thorough. Very thorough. They are thorough. And detailed. Very yeah, thorough. so. Detailed. Yeah. Uh, it's no surprise that the latest uh, vice chancellor for Kumasi happens to be a phytochemist. Oh, the lady. The lady. Oh, nice. Yeah. And nice. she she adds to the number. The, what, sorry, what's phytochemist? Chemistry of plants. Oh, yes. lovely. So that feeds straight into um, pharmaceutical yes. or pharmacognosy. Ph pharmaceutical chemistry and pharmacognosy. Pharmacognosy. Okay. Yeah. Right. So yeah. so again. Growing up, you know, new young lecturer, yeah. university, and the university, there's some small, small university politics yeah. here and there. Well, as I said, I, I had very good mentors. Uh, and Toto, you know, they, they sort of shaped you without really realizing that they were shaping you for your future. Mm -hmm. So right from the beginning, they were giving us certain assignments, certain responsibilities. As a young lecturer? As, as young lecturers, you know. Which year was this? 1970. Okay. You know, and by 1971, I was serving on the library board of the university. Mm -hmm. I was on the faculty board as a departmental uh, representative, the junior departmental representative, etc. So gradually, I was learning about the university. Mm -hmm. And I moved through the ranks, um, got promoted to senior lecturer. And... Um, then 79 there was this interregnum we'll come yeah. back to 1979 yeah. but i yeah. know that at some point um yeah. prof you were involved in the legon observer as part of the committee yes. editorial yes. committee yes. or something yes we would like to speak a bit about um the legon observer and some of the people who were involved i'll take a short break we'll be right back this is footprint Welcome back to the program. This is Footprints. My name is Samuel Atamensa, and I'm here with Professor Ivan Adiamensa. Is Professor Ad Ad Ivan Adiamensa um, the chemist um, who later went into politics at some level and became the vice chancellor of the University of Ghana? And uh, he's been everywhere. Uh, Prof, so in Legon, um, we talk about the Legon Observer. And I talk about the Legon Observer because and which was a publication, um, a news publication by the university community, is that correct? Uh, well, yeah. mm. But it's, again, it was yeah. very loud. It, yes. had a, it, yes. it, it was very powerful. Yeah. Interestingly, just yesterday, I was reading an article that I wrote in the new Legon Observer mm -hmm. entitled, What the Old Legon Observer Stood For. Wow. Just yesterday, I was reading it. It's, it's lying upstairs. No, no, I think I've even brought it down here. Um, the Legon Observer was established after the 66 school mm -hmm. as one of the, by a group of people, not necessarily an instrument of the University of Ghana. Oh, okay. It was a private thing. Oh. Um, Legon Society for National Affairs, mm -hmm. that was the, the name of the group, uh, led by Professor Jones Corte. Professor Baita, the old Baita, yeah. uh, not the young one, not the son, the old man himself, and a whole lot of other people. And they established the Legon Observer as their mouthpiece to sort of teach the tenets of uh, 
democracy, free speech, etc. It didn't take long for them to get on the wrong side of the, of the <laughs> soldiers at the, then, at the time, NLC. I don't know whether you remember the Abbott case. Yeah, I heard about some, that. Some, um, I, an American pharmaceutical company, Abbott, Abbott Pharmaceuticals, pharmaceuticals. Yes. they wanted to buy the Gihok Pharmaceuticals when all of Nkrumah's uh, factories were put on sale. And uh, the, the Legal Observer surprisingly stood against it. And the fight was led by people like Dr. John Soforiata, Ken Oforiata's father. Brother, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, to cut a long story short, I, I was uh, recommended by Professor Dubuahin to join the Legal Observer. And before long, I became the secretary the to the editorial committee uh, with Paul Ansan as the editor. Mm -hmm. Later on, Ebo Daniel became the editor. Uh, A. N. Minsa. Ebo Daniel, the lawyer? No, Ebo Daniel, the registrar. The registrar, okay. Yeah. Uh, and A. N. Minsa, Professor A. N. Minsa. He also, also served as an editor before. He was my classmate right from Achimota School. Mm -hmm. And I served as secretary to the editorial committee. So we were virtually responsible for uh, putting out the uh, the journal every two weeks. I also worked under Professor Yauchumesi, the, pres the current uh, chairman of the University Council, oh. also on the editorial committee of the Legal Observer. And um, we kept the, uh, the journal going until after the 81 coup. Mm -hmm. Are any memorable occasions, any experiences while you were um, part of this Legon Observer? Well, um, I was not on the committee when the Observer was taken to court for contempt. And, uh, by who? Uh, by, by the courts. I think they wrote an article which the courts, the, the judges thought was contemptuous of the courts. And they were all dragged before the court, uh, the leaders, including Professor Baita, uh, Professor Thompson, E.J. Thompson, and a few others. Uh, they were dragged before the courts and severely reprimanded. Mm -hmm. And what was your own uh, relationship with uh, Professor P.A.V. P. Ansan? Oh, Paul Ansan, I worked with him until his death. Yes, we were very, very close friends. As I said, it was through Legal Observer and indeed through Paul Anson, who was a personal friend to uh, Hillary Clinton. was Lehmann. your senior? Oh, far, 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 far my senior. He was teaching French yeah. when I was a student. Before he left to go and do a master's in journalism to come and start the School of studies. Communication Studies. Yeah. And even when he was teaching French as a student, Myself, Ian Mensa, and uh, Bo Daniel, who were all students. He used to relate to us all very, very much. Very, very Great well. guy. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, being a Fanti also. Uh, 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 <laughs> uh, but at some point, yes. you caught the attention of Dr. Hila Lehman. Yes. Tell us about that experience. Yes. Um, as I said, I met Dr. Lehman through Paul Anson long before he came into politics. politics. He wrote some articles for the Legal Observer mm -hmm. on soldiers who try to indulge in politics. And the articles were very long. So Paul said we should go, he's his friend, we should go to his house at Asylum Down. At that time, he was still in the Foreign Service. Dr. Lehman, Dr. Yes. Lehman okay. was still in the Foreign Service. So this would be under the military government? Military government. Either Kutua Champong Yes, or I think it was during the transition between Kutua Champong and... Uh, Rollins. And, no, and uh, Akufu. Uh, Akufu. Yeah. So the article was a bit controversial, you know, being a civil servant, uh, writing about... So we went to go and discuss with him how best to have those articles published so that we could come and convince the editorial committee for, to have the articles 
published. And that's when I first got to meet him. And he struck me as a very, very deep thinking person. And that's when we started developing a sort of relationship. Mm -hmm. and he told me a lot about himself, his early life, and all that. At this point, he was he was Dr. Hila Lehmann. He was Dr. Hila Lehmann and a civil servant. And he was a French scholar as well. He was a French scholar, a history scholar, an economics scholar. Wow. He, you know, uh, if I may tell a little, though this is not a Lehmann program. We'll, we'll, we'll get into the Lehmann. Okay, we'll all right. We'll open fire we'll, on the Lehmann All right, issues. okay. Uh, but it's, uh, and then you also had some engagement with, with uh, Ghana Broadcasting interviewing yes. people how how because you see you're a science student and a typical one at that but you you had a way of expressing yourself that caught the attention of people how yes. did you get there well you know my association with ghana broadcasting started very early in my days in arch motor school okay i used to go and do piano recitals as a Form 3 boy. In fact, in Form 1, I had been interviewed on GBC on one of their children's programs. So the people there got to know me right from a little boy. And as I grew up, I, they got to know me better. So from, I also, I always tell people that my first paid job was in broadcasting and not in science but in music mm -hmm. uh, so vacation i used to go and work at the music department there was a time that mike egan was my immediate boss wow yeah <laughs> and um so you know through working yeah it opened up opportunities then in 1972 when um, Achampong took over, I, be I was made a member of the board of GBC, probably one of the youngest mm -hmm. uh, uh, ever to be a member of the board of directors of GBC. How old were you? Uh, 72. I was 30 years old. Wow. Yeah, 30 years old. Um, so, that's how I got involved in broadcasting. Before then, even before I was 30, I started doing some of the interview programs on Periscope. Professor J. Queen used to host it. And then uh, Dr. Frimpong took over. Uh, Frimpong became the director general of GBC later. And when Frimpong was leaving, I was asked to take over that program. So I was host for Periscope. And then the sports people also discovered me that because they thought I was fluent enough, auditioned me. And so instead of going into music to work for music department, I was drafted into the sports department as a commentator. Oh, so you worked there proper? No, oh, all okay. this was on part-time okay. basis, either during holidays or even when I became a lecturer until 1981. I was, I was doing commentary for GBC, and I was running uh, these programs also on a sort of freelance basis. Now, uh, in the account of um, Professor Ahoy, he yeah. says that you recommended him to host ah. the yes, political um, debate of 79 elections. Okay, to a large extent, that is true. Uh, there, there are just a few minor issues that I think maybe mm -hmm. need to be brought up. Mm -hmm. It is true, I was doing those interviews. I was the lead interviewer for highly intellectual mm -hmm. programs mm -hmm. for GBC, Correct. even at that young age. So GBC had slated me to do the interviews for the presidential candidates in 1979. As I said, I had got to know Ahoy through our Scrabble Club, and I had realized that he was also a very um, erudite person, mm, very brave also 
uh, no holds barred <laughs> when he was talking to people. And at that time, the ban on politics had been lifted. And I had joined the People's National Party. And there is a history to my joining the People's National Party. You know, I went into politics as far back as the age of nine, when I joined the CPP Youth League at Takwa. And at the age of nine, I was a youth organizer for the Takwa constituency. <laughs> so I wasn't new to politics, okay. but I joined the, the, the PNP. In your, day, in your days, you know, youth, being a youth was proper youth. Proper youth. And now they yeah, yeah, youth yeah. before they no, grow they, too they, much. They, they, they <laughs> <laughs> it was proper youth. Uh, you know, we were young. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We were very young. You know, all of us in elementary school and a few in secondary school. Okay. You know. So, you so, so um, I was supposed to do the interviews. But because I was a member of the uh, PNP. PNP, and I had actually drafted the first draft of the manifesto, manifesto. not knowing that Limantu had been asked by Igala to draft, uh, uh, yeah, to draft a manifesto. Mm -hmm. And the two of us then were told to get together and merge the two into one manifesto. Okay. So I said that in that position, so close to Igala and Liman, I couldn't possibly, you know, later on, it was later on that Liman became the presidential candidate. candidate yeah. Then I said, no, 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 I cannot go and interview him because of my involvement. So it was not because I had become general secretary. Oh, okay. I became general secretary in 1980 when Liman had become president, president. Okay. and not before he became president okay. in 79. So right. that is the little thing okay. that right. needs to be uh, corrected about Thank that. You, so I recommended Kwamna Hoy. That one is true. Oh, okay. okay. That one is true. I recommended him to broadcasting that he can replace me okay. to do the interviews. All right. So that, that I guess he did a good yeah. job at the time. Yeah. And um, so. And, and he came because of that. Mm -hmm. When Rollins took over in, on June 4th mm -hmm. and he needed to be interviewed, there was already an interviewer. Yes. So That's uh, it. naturally he went at So if I had not been in that position, I would have been the first to interview Rollins. <laughs> <laughs> My junior yeah. in school and yeah. someone I taught. Oh, he met you? Oh, I was in Apasas when he came to Form 1. Form 1? And then I went to teach him in Form 5. Wow. Yes. You've been watching Footprint with Professor Ivan Adamensa. sir. There'll definitely be, be a second part of this, so watch out for this. My name is Samuel Adamensa. sir. See you next week.